So in the previous tutorial, we created this Ray-Ban and now we are actually going to animate it and bring some lighting over here and make sure that it looks good. So this is what it looks like right now, but I'm actually going to turn all of this off that we don't really need. So I'm going over here, film, transparent. I'm going to keep the HDRI for the reflections in the glass, but mostly it's going to be a pretty dark background, but we'll get to that. So first of all, I am going to adjust the strength of our HDRI to become a bit more dark, something like this. Then I will turn off all the lights that we have right now. So that's going to be those lights. Cool. Now, the first thing I will do is place our camera somewhere very close by to this logo. We want to make sure that we get a cool logo animation. So somewhere over here, and then I will go into the camera, go to the depth of field, turn it on. Instead of the plane, select this. Let's see, what do you have here? I'm going to select the Ray-Ban logo. And this should make it so that it is visible. I'm simply going to play around with the strength in order to make this bokeh look not that ridiculous as it is right now. And I'm actually going to make a very simple animation for this camera. So turn up the timeline, press I. Let's go over here to frame 48, or maybe it can even be faster. I'm just going to try 48 for now. GXX and move it to the side, press I. And instead of a Bessier, I'm sorry, going to select everything by pressing A, T, linear. And now we have this camera moving like so. Uh, we need a lighting animation on this. So I'm going to press shift and right mouse button to get the 3D cursor right over there. Then we'll place in a light, aerial light. Let's move it over here, backwards. And I'm simply going to animate this light like this. Very simple stuff, nothing crazy going on here. So I'm actually just going to have it start right over here, press I, and go to frame 48. GXX, and let's make sure that the light has passed over it. Once again, A, T, linear, and now it is a linear animation with some light going over it. Now, I'm going to bring in the plane, scale it up, let's bring it down, it doesn't really matter where it is, we just want a black void. E and Z, let's turn this up all the way, let's scale it, go to the shader editor, new, and make it black. Cool. And uh, now it is becoming a bit too dark for these glasses in general. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this animation, I believe. So let's go over here to the timeline. Yeah, so we have a cool lighting animation over the logo. Looks nice, looks clean, very simple stuff. But I want to do something extra right now because otherwise this would only be a two minute tutorial. I can't have that happen, guys. You need to get something more out of this. So I will bring in a new camera, like right over here, view cameras, set active object as camera, and this is now our second camera. So I will select the first camera, go over here to the first frame, and in the timeline, hold your mouse right here, control B, and you will see that the camera is being placed right there. Now on frame 49, I'm going to select camera 001, and I will press control B in the timeline right here. And what do you have? Well the camera is actually changing after that first animation. So now we can use this camera to make a new animation. We're actually just going to do that three times in order to get one of those cool reveal lighting type animations where you first show off the features in a close-up, and then later on you will have a full disclosure about what the product actually is. So let's perhaps go to a different place, maybe something like over here. Control zero. I'm also going to increase the focal length, G and Z. And this one can maybe move from upwards to downwards. I think that would be cool, but I'm going to add something extra to it. So what I will do, place the 3D cursor right here, shift A, curve, circle. Now we have a circle, R, Y, 90, something like that, R, Z. Scale it up a bit, and then I will select this camera, go into the constraints, add a follow path constraint, place it onto the curve. So now the camera is following the curve, but as you can see, it is being displaced quite a lot. And that is because it already has a global uh, deformation of the location. So I'm going right over here, set it to zero, and now it should be on our curve. Since our camera is pretty zoomed in, 
uh, we have a problem with this. So another way to fix that is to add a new empty. Let's go over here. I'm going to choose an arrow simply so I can distinguish it from our original controller right there. And I will scale this arrow up and I will even bring it slightly to the front. Then I will go over here to the constraints of the camera. So go into the camera, constraints, track to constraint. And then I will select the bigger tool and select our arrow that we just created. Where is it? It's right over there. So I made it to distinguish it from the other one and I almost selected the other one. It's just the way it goes, guys. Something like this. And now we have a way to circle around this object in a very cool manner. So maybe something like this. And then we will showcase the product as well. I'm just simply going to add some lights. So let's go over here. Oh, but before we do that, actually, let's go into the camera. Let's go to the depth of field and let's select the very same arrow empty. And now we also have some depth of field. We can make it look cooler. I like it if it looks cool. Uh, and we can also play around with where this is located, of course. Maybe on this logo right here. So let's go to frame 49, which is where this camera is going to start. I'm going to press I. And then I will move over here to frame 100. Uh, let's change some of those things like this. And I. And in this case, I'm going into the graph editor and I will flip these around so it comes in fast in the beginning and then slows down and then it goes out fast in the end. I might also do that for the other one, by the way, but we'll see, we'll see. S and Y, S and X. And in this way, you will get this inverse S shape, which will help with the speed. And then it's going to slow down. We have slow motion area, and then we have this moment to transition into another shot, which is exactly what we're going to do. So on frame 98, before this animation has ended, we wanted to be switching in the peak of this animation, okay? So I'm going to add another camera. Let's go over here. Camera. View. Camera. Set active object as camera. And I'm going to press Control B in the timeline. Let's go to the timeline. Control B. Uh, camera. Camera one. Camera two. So if we have a look at this, first we have this animation, then we have this animation, and then we have the last animation, which we haven't created yet, but we will do so right now. Uh, but before we do that, actually, let's go over here to this camera. And let's bring in some lighting that looks a little bit better, uh, because this is quite flat. I'm also going into the camera view per display, passepartout, and make sure that we are actually seeing what's going on here, okay? All right, so let's bring in a new light, area light. And in this case, I might just have one come from the top to get this cool edge light. Let's just increase the power of this a little bit. The Raven logo is being lit up as well, quite conveniently. We can give it a slide animation as well. So frame 49, press I. Then go over here to frame 99. And let's simply rotate it towards that side. So press I. And now we also have a lighting animation on that area. A, T, linear, and now it's linear again. Whoop. Cool lighting animation. So where are we right now? We have this lighting animation. Then we have this one. Shoop. Very cool. And now for the final one, let's select our camera. Camera 002, that is. All right, so we're not going to do that. Uh, we're simply going to show it from the top and circle around it like this. I think that will work out better. Uh, so I will simply bring in, I will delete these keyframes first of all, then I'll go over here, bring the 3D cursor to this area. Let's bring in a curve circle, like so. Let's bring it upwards. Let's shift S, cursor to selected, select camera 002, shift S, selection to cursor. And then we're going to add another one of these empties, so empty. I'm going to select the sphere right now, simply so we know exactly which one it is, go to the camera, go to the constraints, let's add a follow path, let's add a track to, we've done this before. For the follow path, we're going to select our curve circle, press N, open up the panel, set all of this to zero. Then for the track two, we're going to select our sphere empty. Ooh, that's the one. We could simply bring this up, G and Y, just real slowly, so something like this. We need to change this lighting animation as well. But for the for now, let's just do the uh, the offset like so. So I'm going over here 
press I on frame 99, go to frame 133, and we're simply going to rotate it towards this side, press I. Go into the graph editor, let's make sure we see everything we're doing. S and Y to inverse the skill. S and X, and make sure it's not flat right here, so S and Y, just make sure there's some type of motion going on here. And whoop. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Now we need to change the lighting animation. So let's go back to the timeline. And I'm actually just going to place it uh, right here. Let's see what that looks like. And well, it's a bit too janky for my liking. Maybe something like this. Okay, now it's moving out. And then for the final camera, we're going to place it exactly in front of our Ray-Ban, like this. Add a camera, GZZ. Set active object as camera. You want to make sure this is straight, so press on one on the numpad and then dial it in. Perhaps increase the focal length, bring it backwards like this. And we're actually going to start over here on frame 32, 132, select the final camera, control V, and move this backwards. Let's give it like 190 right here, GZZ. And now it is in frame, press I, and we should have a animation, I messed it up, I didn't place a keyframe on 132, zoom it back in, press I, and now it is also moving outwards. But for this one, let's press Control tab to go into the graph editor. We want to go over here, we are moving on the Y location, so let's open the Y location like this, and uh, let's have a look at normalize, alright, so Y is the only one that truly matters, that is correct, so I'm going to bring this down. So it starts really quick and it slows down over time, Oof, like that. Very cool and premium looking stuff. And now we need to make a final lighting animation for this, or at least give it some proper lighting. So let's increase the scale of this area light. R and X, let's make it light from behind a little bit. Something like this should probably do the trick. I'm going into Lumio real quickly. Make this come from the back, then rotate the light around until we get something that I think is mildly good enough. I like to have this gradient from over this side, looks pretty cool. And perhaps what we can do is go over here, add a point light all the way on the plane. Increase the size, increase the power, increase the radius. And now we have a gradient for the background. Let's go into the viewport display, passepartout, and for the point right here. Let's see, does this look good? Is this something we like to have? Should we make it a color? I don't think so. I think adding a color is a bit too much for these type of animations. We can make it slightly bluish. All right, so now let's have a look at all the animations that we created. And do keep in mind that if you are following this tutorial, you have now created like four animations or five seconds worth of animations in a matter of minutes. So I think that's quite all right. There you go. Boop. We have the light coming from the side, looks a little bit weird. We're going to fix that. Let's see which one is our oh, area 006, I mean. So that one should be turned off because it was giving us trouble over here as well. Yeah, don't like that. So we're going right over here to frame 48. And this can be turned off in the renders. And then on frame, let's say 132, it should be turned on. So let's go to frame 131 and it shouldn't really matter, but I like bringing my keyframes together like this. So it should be turned off right now until the final animation. We cannot see that, unfortunately. This also looks pretty cool, by the way. Do we even need Arial Light 6? 
choices choices I think it looks pretty cool I don't know we're going to keep it all right so that's basically it for making a very quick lighting tutorial I hope you learned how to animate lights, how to bring in multiple cameras into one scene so you can just simply work in that one without having to start a new file and making an animation over there and rendering out four different files. You can simply do it in one blend file. And well, this is just one of those simple lighting animations. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next one, we are going to be creating this. So I hope you're as excited as I am and I will see you there.